Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Welcome back to AutoLine Daily. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist, filling in for John once again. In the second half of the show, we'll have a preview of AutoLine this week, which is all about powertrains. But first, the news. Could GM take over Peugeot Citroën? According to Reuters, the Peugeot family, which has a 25% stake in PSA, has reportedly agreed to give up control of the company in an effort to merge with Opel. As you know, GM and PSA partnered up last year to develop new platforms and powertrains. But the two companies have been hit hard during the European recession, so this could allow them to cut costs even further. Both companies declined comment on the report. A new study from the University of Michigan that was commissioned by Bosch finds that diesels have a lower total cost of ownership than gasoline vehicles in the U.S. Researchers found that diesel owners save between $2,000 and $6,000 during a three to five year period when compared to similar gasoline vehicles. Despite higher prices for diesel fuel, owners still save money because diesels are up to 40% more efficient than gas cars. And diesels don't depreciate as fast as gasoline cars, 11 of the 12 diesels in the study held their value better than similar gas cars over a three-year period. Do you remember Rain-X? That's the glass cleaner that you can use on the windows of your car that makes the rain run right off without beating or streaking. Well, on the new Cadenza, Kia has treated the front side windows with what they call hydrophobic coating. Translation, it has a phobia for water. The hydrophobic coating is impregnated in the glass and works just like Rain-X, except that it lasts a lot longer, for years. They put it on the front side windows because, obviously, there's no windshield wipers there and it helps improve visibility. They should have put it on all the glass, except for the windshield. Just saying. Have you ever ridden in a new car and thought, wow, this car is much quieter than mine? Well, that is one of the goals Ford has set out to achieve. The company is the first automaker to use the thermal image technology to locate and fix air leaks to help improve interior quietness. The technology, which is also used by the military and law enforcement, pumps warm air into the interior of a vehicle, then engineers use a thermal camera to locate problem areas. Now if they could only figure out a way to keep back seat drivers quieter. And in other Ford news, yesterday the company introduced a new sport truck called the Tremor that it says will address the needs of the street truck enthusiast. It is based on the short wheelbase F-150 and is the first one to offer an EcoBoost engine, the same 3.5 liter engine that most F-150s are ordered with. The truck also features an FX appearance package, unique 20 inch wheels, and a 410 rear axle that has an electronic locking rear differential for both two and four wheel drive versions. The Tremor goes on sale this fall. Last year was a good year for Japanese automakers in the U.S. According to data from the Japan Automotive Manufacturers Association, automakers from the country saw vehicle production in the U.S. jump 36% to 3.3 million units, which is nearly a million more than 2011 and the most since 07. Market share also improved by 2% and is expected to jump another 1% next year. It is also important to note that Japanese automakers were aided by a weakening yen and were able to boost imports from Japan by 19 percent. So what's the best way to downsize an engine and still provide the power the customer is looking for? That discussion is coming up next. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. As you all know, the auto industry must hit a 54.5 mile per gallon fleet average by the middle of next decade. To find out how automakers will achieve that number, AutoLine invited engineers from GM, Ford, and Chrysler to talk about powertrains. In the following clip, the panel discusses which technology is best to boost an engine while downsizing it. 
It, okay, well, let's yeah. go back to boosting then. Turbocharger mm -hmm. or supercharger? You seem to be going with... We do with both. GM has both. Both. And we have some applications that work very well for turbocharging and some work very well for supercharging. Supercharging is, technologies have gotten quite sophisticated over the years. There's next generation super, um, superchargers that Eaton's been introducing and we've been applying a lot of our engines uh, to very good effect. And if you look at the fuel economy differences between the two, they're very, very subtle. Uh, they used to not be so subtle. They're very, very subtle now. Supercharging gives you that instant throttle response, and that's what everybody loves, is it's intoxicating. You tip in that throttle, you don't want to wait for turbos to spool up, you want instant, uh, immediate throttle response, and you do get that with a very high efficient supercharger. So we do look at both, and we have applications that work well, one versus another. V engines, it's, uh, the intake manifold comes out, the supercharger goes in, it's part of the intake manifold, it's a very elegant design solution, and it still allows the engine to be compact. Uh, to put a supercharger on a four-cylinder engine, eh, not so much, because it's like driving another accessory, like an alternator, for example. Uh, so it, it may be worthwhile to look at some other alternatives, like a, a turbocharger, for instance. And Mazen, do you see, uh, is it an either-or? You go small displacement, turbocharge or supercharge, or electrification? Or are we going to see both? It's quite possible, and, and there are some who, who have uh, put them together. And uh, you know, in terms of the supercharger versus turbocharger, the neat thing about turbochargers is that you're reusing energy in the exhaust gas that otherwise would be wasted. And, and then packaging-wise also, you, you're, you're, it, it, it offers you a, a pretty uh, optimized package. Now, Jordan mentioned some of the instant response of the supercharging, and that, that is true, but like, when, when you design it as a complete system, and uh, some of the things we've done on our uh, EcoBoost engines is integrate the exhaust manifold with the cylinder head and reduce the time be between the exhaust leaving the combustion chamber and, and hitting that turbo uh, wheel. It tremendously improves the response and you end up with vir virtually no turbo lag. So it's really an optimized solution overall. And the more we, we have experience with these engines, the, the more they're, they're becoming uh, really an end solution for fuel economy, performance, and refinement, and, and that confident experience that the customers love. And it's not incompatible with electrification. And my guess is you, you may be seeing more of that. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn more about what automakers are doing to make powertrains more efficient, you can watch that entire show right now on our website at autoline.tv. And a quick programming note before I sign off. There won't be any new Autoline dailies next week because the Autoline crew is taking the week off to celebrate the country's independence. So have a great 4th of July. I'm Peter DiLorenzo, the auto extremist. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.